<laughs> you've just joined us. You've just missed the most exciting game we've ever played. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> this is going to suck. <laughs> <laughs> In comparison to the word game we just played. <laughs> Hello, everyone. And <laughs> No Welcome pressure. to the very 49th Ooh. hour of Adventurers Wanted Rebellion. Uh, my <laughs> name is Leo and I am going to be your games master this morning. This is a relaxed performance, meaning we have a relaxed attitude to sound and movement from the audience for the benefit of people who would uh, struggle to stay still or silent for the entire hour. The lights are going to stay exactly like this and there should be no loud noises, no sudden loud noises. Why are you looking at me? Well, I always look at you, don't I? Um, but there will be some mood music uh, throughout. If you do need anything, uh, Naomi is our stage manager. She's just over your right shoulder there. Give her a wave. Um, and if you feel free, uh, if you feel like you do need a break, feel free to duck out of the door you came in and uh, join us again when you're ready. Uh, we're also joined this morning in the first hour by our wonderful British Sign Language interpreter, uh, Tommy. Yay! <laughs> Who continues to astound by uh, <laughs> interpreting our improvised fantasy uh, to you all. So what is this? This is a tabletop role-playing game, which means that the four people on my left and right control individual unique characters in a fantasy setting. As the games master, I control the fantasy setting. Uh, indeed, the, uh, the antagonists that they fight, the, uh, the weather when it's appropriate, and sometimes the woodland creatures that they decide to talk to for some reason. Uh, <laughs> and to try and keep things mm, relatively fair, uh, we interact with each other using dice. Uh, the most common one you'll hear us talk about is the D20, this 20-sided icosahedron, if you're being nerdy. Um, in general, uh, higher numbers are better, uh, with a natural 20 being a critical success at whatever you're doing, and a natural 1, that means rolling a 1 on the die, uh, meaning you're failing no matter how easy the thing that you were trying to do should have been. Um, yeah, James has rolled quite a few of those this game so far. Is, uh, you had a good session last time, though. I did, I'm on a high. Uh, that segues us very nicely into uh, why don't we meet our players and their characters, and then I'll catch you up on the story. Uh, so, give us your name, your character's name, their pronouns, and tell us a little bit about where they're at at the moment. Uh, so, my name is James. I'm playing a uh, warlock uh, tiefling, which is like a half demonic um, bloke. Uh, he, him, and oh, his name is Luck. Uh, he has been kind of emotionally through up and down, but at the moment he's on a high, um, hopefully. Rolling ones won't affect that today. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Will. Hi, good morning. My name is Will Thompson Brandt. I'm playing a guy called Owen McCall, uh, who is a, a high elf ranger who uh, thinks very largely of his abilities and not very highly of anybody else in the party, it seems to be. Um, but he has a rather fun time uh, getting into his own mixes and troubles when he seems to think he's good at things and doesn't turn out to be because I had some terrible roles last time <laughs> I was here as well. Uh, I'm Reese Lawton and I'm playing Walton Brynlaff uh, who is a sorcerer, a human sorcerer, he his and uh, it's just very excited to be here, very excited and happy and very confused as to why everything seems to be going wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Uh, I'm Miranda. I, I will be playing a half-elf bard called Addisana Leodon. You can call her Addis for short. Uh, she is a professional folklore and legend storyteller. She loves all kinds of fairy tales and kind of wishes that things would go like fairy tales and expects them to. Uh, so she has been spending... She's going to have so much she fun. She is going to have the best time. Um, but she has come and wanted to join the, the rebellion to sort of really get an inside look at, at the heroes of the current story of, of the world. I think she might be a little shocked as to what she finds. And just, uh, I know you've said it a lot, but just to confirm, she, her. She, her, yes. Yeah, no uh, as Likewise for me. Fantastic. Um, okay, so what we've been doing here uh, at Adventures Wanted is we play long form campaigns, which means that you guys have jumped in at hour 49 here, apart from uh, returners, of course. Uh, you're jumping in at hour 49, so let me see if I can catch you up. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the characters are members of a rebellion which for the last five years have been uh, enslaved by an imperial cult and forced to mine a mysterious ore. 
In the last uh, 12 to 13 days, they've overthrown this cult, driven them out of the capital city, united the local area, and have spent uh, a few days trying to get to grips with why the cult needed the ore and what powers the ore has. They've found out so far that it's incredibly explosive, but it also seems to corrupt... Uh, the very beings of the people that are exposed to it, uh, leading to some pretty horrible monstrosities that they've met so far. In the last session, uh, unfortunately, the cult struck, struck back. Uh, the Imperials uh, came from uh, out of the West and swept forth with these horrendous, uh, almost undefeatable monstrosities. And uh, while the heroes managed to get as many civilians out of the city of Goldcrest as they could um, their city itself was lost uh, and where we're going to pick back up now is with uh, our four heroes travelling north towards their original hometown of Homewood uh, Homewood sorry um, as they watch this line of this column maybe three to four people deep at various points pick their way up the small road through the hills heading north towards Homewood. In the horizon you can almost see your township um, on the side of the mountain uh, and the mountain of course is where the sorcerers in the party will have been from off to the east uh, as the sun rises uh, you can see the, uh, the clouds that have rolled in over the city behind you uh, belie the cult and the evil magics that they've brought with them. And indeed, as you cast glances south towards Goldcrest, you can see plumes of smoke rising from it, a uh, destroyed city that uh, these seven to eight hundred people you're travelling with called home. You travel north, trying to help the walking wounded where you can, some of them staggering with head wounds, some of them limping with uh, torn legs or broken bones uh, it's a pretty sorry sight and you do get the impression that you're you're an open target at the moment uh, can I get perception checks for everyone please 7 7, okay good stuff 7, seven. 4 oh, <laughs> Fifteen. Fifteen. Oh. <laughs> Thank God the ranger's doing their job. <laughs> I'm going to say. Owen, as you look to the skies to the south and you take in the burning gold crest, um, you see that there is, in fact, a group of the, the buzzing, like, um, Bayaki trying to follow you. Uh, it would be easy to, to shoot them from here. Just for those of you who have not met them before, the Bayaki are something between... Uh, skinless dogs and sort of wasps. Um, they they have these insectoid uh, wings and arms, but the face is more of a snout with teeth like a dog. Right. Um, they're pretty horrendous. Um, <laughs> and you can see three or four of them making pace, uh, seeing, trying to pick off some of your refugees at the back of the column uh, as you're moving up. Okay, uh, I'm the only person that can see this currently, right? Yep, but you can, of course, communicate. Of course. <laughs> no, I thought I'd just keep it to myself. <laughs> um, uh, in which case, I'd like to start heading towards the back of the column anyway, um, and kind of shout a cry to the rest of the party and just say that... Uh, seem to be having a spot of bother from the Bayaki again. Care to lend a hand? Oh, marvellous. All right, uh, so... Where do you want us? At the back. At the back. Come on, marvellous. Yes. Maybe not everyone. That, uh, does it look like could maybe one or two of us handle these guys? Do we think, or uh, would it require all of us? Like, to be fair, the, you're not the only heroes in this column. Uh, you've got pretty much everyone who was in Goldcrest, including members of the council. So oh, Broldrin, right, okay. Simon, they're all in this column. Yeah. Broldrin being uh, a stout sort of. A female dwarf leader, barbarian. Uh, Simon being a fairly young, uh, charismatic fighter uh, who 
who's been elected to a de facto leader uh, of the... It was a very small and quick election. <laughs> <laughs> Probably wouldn't hold up by UN standards. But um, he's been elected to be leader for now. Um, so it's not like you're abandoning the like refugees if right, the four okay. of you move to the rear of the column. Ah, okay. Um, well, it's up to you guys then in that case. I'm, I'm heading to the back. Right, let's go. Let's do it. Yes, I agree with that. <laughs> Marvellous. Let's go. Okay. Positivity. Yay. Uh, you can see the three Bayaki swooping in from the south, um, clipping up the hillside as they're coming in range of an attack. Um, what do each of you do? Uh, each of you will have a round before they reach you. Uh, what do each of you do to sort of swap them away? Can I ask how far away they are currently? Yeah, they're about, a, I would say, about 100 feet away. Perfect. Okay, well, my uh, my longbow's 150 feet, isn't it? So I will, I believe it's 150 feet. Yeah, let's just go by dexterity scores for now. So that would put Owen first. So that's 17. You've got 12. 12. 14. 14. 14. 14. Okay, so you two can roll a d6 quickly. Three. Four. Four. So we'll go you, you, well you. Cool. Grand. Um, so I'll, I'll uh, ready my longbow and take aim at one of the Bayaki with an, with an intention to kind of pierce or uh, kind of knock out one of its wings, I guess. Okay, cool. Just to, to kind of knock it out of the sky. Sure. And you get two attacks, of course. Yes. Yeah. So have a go. Uh, you'll have to remind me how this works. So if you roll your d20 there, yeah. and then you add 6 to it for the attack. Uh, that is so 22. 22. Yeah, very good. You hit exactly where you want it as the arrow goes flying through the air. It clips the tendon between uh, the wing and the body, uh, which is quite bulbous anyway. Uh, these sort of insectoid wings. And uh, yeah, roll your damage. Yeah, so it's 1d8 and then plus... Uh, it's a D10. Oh, D10. Sorry, my bad. That's all right. It's the pyramid-looking one. That's <laughs> still two. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's five. Five damage. Yep. Yeah. And, and your second attack, which is the same thing. Same thing again. Uh, it's much better. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. And um, seven. Seven. So the two arrows follow each other and uh, severely cut. Uh, this tendon and the bayaki goes spinning off to the side uh, it's still flapping but it probably even can't keep pace with you anymore you've wounded it so badly uh, good job Walton uh, is it windy you mentioned clouds earlier <laughs> <laughs> there is a stiff breeze coming up from the south yes very well it's coming up from the south all right, all right. All right, <laughs> well then. Uh, I'm going to cast Storm Guide and choose the uh, wind to head head towards the south to slow them down. Sure. Is that is that an action or is that just a bonus action? I, uh, I can't remember. It's an action. It's, it's an action. An action. Okay, so you turn... Oh, wait. <coughs> if it's windy, you if can use a bonus, bonus action. action. I thought it was a bonus well, action. Yes. So, uh, so... How uh, do you command the winds for us, Walter? I will raise my hands... Loftwards and go. All right, lads. <laughs> <laughs> that way. <laughs> that way, please. Thank you. And as you uh, do your uh, seemingly ineffectual wafts, <laughs> um, the wind, in fact, completely switches direction. And instead of blowing up from the south, it comes down from the mountain top, screaming past you and slowing the bayaki up. Uh, you still have an action. And I will ready my crossbow. Okay. I would say that takes you no time whatsoever. Marvellous. Like, <laughs> oh, you you can take a shot with it. Is I what I'm kill. Saying. Excellent. Well, then I shall use my. Because I think it's it's only fair to have could, to to assume that you'd been travelling okay. combat yeah. ready. Yeah, ah, that's good. Marvellous. So I shall take aim with my crossbow. Go for it. Yay! And oh, there yeah. were two more Viking. Oh, oh yeah. four. <laughs> Marvellous. <laughs> Four table over Great. here. Oh, yeah. You release the bolts, 
Um, and you weren't quite ready for the differentials in wind I and how they affect the ball. I'm like, yes, wind! You're very good at directing the wind, but you, you, you aren't good at the maths about, you know, making the bolt travel through the wind. And it is carried high, high above the bayaki and out towards the mm. distance. You lose sight of it. <laughs> that was a practice <laughs> one. Well, well, better luck next time. Exactly. He's just checking what direction the wind was going Good idea, in. Yeah. yes. Sometimes. And I just let out a very long <laughs> sigh as I watch this happen. Adesana, we come to you. Um, I would like to cast Silent Image, uh, but actually, before I do, are we on horseback or are we just chilling? No, no. We, and we're all kind of in the same area. Yeah. Okay. I would like so to. So it's 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 a walking column of refugees. All right. And I'd like to cast um, Silent Image uh, to make it look like there is um, just sort of. Can I do it so that from the Bayaki's view, it's where we are. It's just ground. So they can't see us. That's quite powerful for silent. Damage. All right, just a cloud then. Okay. Just a cloud, so they can't see us. Okay. Um, so that that's good. And then um, who's up next? You're up next. Um, I'm going to turn to you and I go. I know that we're all heroes here, but uh, we need a hero. We're holding out for a hero <laughs> to the end of the night. I got Go. this. Yes. <laughs> so you get a D8 of inspiration. I, I'll take it. <laughs> yes. I'll need yes. it. Fantastic. Um, so a cloud appears in between you and the bike. So I can't see them now. No. Good. <laughs> but they can't see you either. Um, in that case, uh, mm, I'm going to just have to ready um, an attack on them. Or can I... Because I know she's just cast a spell. Yeah. Would I be able to? I, mean, I know if, if the old rules of disbelieving the illusion. Well, I I feel that it's only fair to, to yeah, because you've watched her cast it. Yeah. <laughs> so ca can I just yes. take? Yeah, my... just take the shot. But I'm gonna say disadvantage if you're doing Eldritch Blast. Yeah. Yeah. So disadvantage on this one. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> James is angry at me but already. You've got the first the one's a one. <laughs> Second one. It's your red. Oh gosh. It's a two. Oh, I also got a natural oh, 20. Oh. My might add, but so it was disadvantage. How disadvantage works is he rolls twice and he has to take the lower one. So he rolled a critical success, but it ended up being a two. <laughs> So you fire your Eldritch Blasts through the clouds, these red bolts of lightning, if I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you have no way of knowing whether they hit or not. I'll you assume they hit. Yeah, just assume they hit. <laughs> ego. What, e what ego? <laughs> Walton cheers. Yeah. Yay! Thank you. Well done. There is a beat. A moment of silence. And you become aware of the refugees moving behind you in the walking column they're about they've made it about 30 feet away from you now up the hill you're starting to lag behind and the bikey don't reappear well I, I think we've seen them off job done oh that's brilliant <laughs> let's let's not get complacent <laughs> I don't know. I feel quite complacent. Um, can I send? Um, I love you. I absolutely love your character. Can I send my um, uh, b -b 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 what's he called? Yeah. Hand. Uh, peace. You called him peace. Peace. Yeah. Can I send my? Um, so what's it called? So lock has familiar. a familiar. There we go. I wasn't familiar with the name. You. You weren't familiar with the name. Peace. Uh, Sorry, <laughs> Naomi. Oh, Size. From the back. Can I send peace up? To, through the clouds to Would you scout. like to describe to us how peace appears? Yes, he is invisible. Oh. <laughs> ah. Never mind then. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't know. If he, if he were visible, what would he um, look like? He shifts from several different shapes depending on his mood. Um, often he appears on a, as a toad or a centipede wrapped around one of my horns. Um, sometimes he turns into a bat, but if you catch him on the off chance, he is a little demon closet thing. Oh, that's his true form. That's his true form. Okay. So, um, He's really nice, though. He likes being petted. Locke's eyes go full white as he begins to share his view with his familiar. And the familiar flies through Addis's, uh, Addisana's cloud and comes out the other side and sees that the Bayaki 
were completely fooled by your silent image. Yeah. <laughs> Smashed it. They lost sight of you, and when you're out of sight, you're out of their very small insectoid minds. <laughs> um, and they have decided to peel back and try... That You can see them now flying down into the valley towards the farms, maybe to pick off some cattle, James. Thank you. Um, <laughs> just so you don't go chasing them. Um, yeah. I know that's an in-joke, but there we are. <laughs> you did that earlier. Um, yeah, you seem to have you seem to have seen them all. Cool. I relay this information back. It looks like they your your cloud works. They uh, they off to kill some cattle. Oh, really? Oh, I feel like quite the hero. <laughs> Those poor cows. Should we go and see them off? <laughs> oh, no. No, no, no. I, th- I, th- I, th- I think we should just let them let them go. Yeah, let's actually. look after I, the I think our own refugees. That's that's a good idea. Yes. Let's do that. I agree. We we join the column. Sure. Well, you turn around and the column's about 40 feet away from you now. Oh. Yeah, oh. Dog. Oh. Can, I, can I get perception checks for everyone, please? <laughs> Six. So. <laughs> I got 18. 18. 10. Ten. Ten. Natural one. Woo! Oh. Yeah! Oh. What One table Walton, over here. Walton, what are you doing that you are so imperceptive <laughs> right now? <laughs> I'm looking at the cloud and I'm listening out for a toad. <laughs> a flying toad. Yeah, I'm listening out for a flying toad. <laughs> okay. Um, so once again, it is Owen that is the most perceptive in this situation, but anyone who got over a 10, as you look back up the uh, column, it's going around the crest of a hill. So uh, the road is sort of snaking right in a meander around the top of this hill, uh, which leads you higher and higher towards uh, your home halfway up the mountainside. And there's a rumble and skitterings of stones and, uh, start coming down from the top of the hill. That's all you see. Owen, you very clearly hear a sort of almost burrowing noise okay. as you uh, stand and watch the, uh, the hill. Whereabouts is whereabouts is this burrowing coming from in relation to the below the hill? Below the hill. Yeah. So off to your left, underneath the top of the hill. Right. And as you watch, you and only you can perceive that the top of the hill begins to shift and move, and it is beginning to slide as you're watching it to the right, towards your column. But only you've seen that. Yeah. Um, uh, in in which case uh, I want to would you call would you would we call this like mountainous terrain as well? Um, Just before I this start. is uh, yeah okay fine yeah mountainous terrain sure yeah um, so before any of us as I imagine start moving um, I, I've got a natural explorer perk for mountainous terrain which means that difficult terrain is a slower travel okay so anything that anything for that you happens, guys in particular yeah so anything that happens within that means that we could at least catch up to the caravan that's really good that's really good <laughs> right yep okay um, in which case uh, I'd like to take off at a sprint back towards the caravan um, okay. and just yell behind me as we're as as I'm taking off at full pelt that um there's a landslide up ahead we must get back um right so what the three of you see is Owen just takes off in a sort of Tom Cruise run <laughs> <laughs> up the hill yes. screaming landslide we must get back but none of your Refugees seem to have heard you. I did roll for it, I promise. None of the refugees ahead of you seem to have heard it. They just presumably are just considering that as part of the combat. Uh, um, I will. Um, how far away is the front of the column? Oh, hundreds of feet. How you're many tra- hundreds of feet? You're, trans- you're transporting about seven to eight hundred people. So if we work it out, maybe. 400 feet? Perfect. Um, well, I'm going to um, put my hand on these guys' shoulders and dimension door to the kind of assu- oh, the middle of the column about in- underneath the thing. Okay. I don't know why he was running away. You can take one person with you. I, I thought it was <laughs> up to a certain... No, it's one person. Yeah, I'm going to take you. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! 
Um, so I'll, I'll take uh, her, I and mean, then when I get to there, I'm going to start psychically, as far, like 30 feet around me, telling everyone there's a landslide. Run, 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 run. run, run. Okay, that's really cool. Um, Thank could you. Could you narrate See you later. how your dimension door appears? Um, yeah, I go. As you just grab I, and I go, <laughs> everywhere. Just trust Ow. me, and then we, as, a, as a popping sound, we disappear, leaving him all by himself. Um, and we appear in the middle of uh, a group of refugees who I assume will be quite surprised. They um, will be very surprised. Yeah. Um, and then I will start. Um, my, my my head just is in it just starts shouting in everyone else's heads oh. um, with my. Psychic. What are you say, saying specifically? I'm saying um, a landslide is coming. Run. Okay. Uh, people start to scream. And there's a, a a real bustle, and they they scatter both directions, uh, as well as down the hill as well. None of these people can see specifically where the landslide is coming from yet. Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll pick it up. They'll pick it up. Uh, uh, sure Locke, have you said this to me as well? Or have people just started screaming? He did say yeah. everyone in his around Fair him enough. 30 feet, so that's in your head. That's in my head. And you also heard Owen say, that's sound, true. landslide running. Can, can I now see the landslide? or Roll a perception check. Uh, by the way, Walton, when you turn around, your party's all Everyone's gone. Everyone's just gone. They've all gone. <laughs> Eight. <laughs> Eight. <laughs> you look up at the hill and maybe it's beginning to move. You can definitely see... Uh, pieces of mud and just clumps rolling down the hill, but you can't you can't quite tell that it's a landslide yet. <laughs> what would be the best thing for the column to do in this position? Just to get them it's further you, clear away from it? Or? Do you want to try and clear the side of the hill? Are you trying to make them run up that way or run this back down the hill? Down the hills. I mean, I mean you're at the back of the column at the moment, and suddenly people have started ahead of you, have started turning and pushing back towards you. There's something of a stampede. Surely the best thing to do is to go sideways so that we're not running backwards where we will still end up in the landslide. Yeah, slightly later than we would have been. Yeah, yeah. it would continue going down the landslide. <laughs> it's anyway. not a great quality of life, so though, is it? <laughs> so directly in front of you, you can see the, the sort of. 40 people directly in front of you are still move, trying to move up the hill, whereas the 50 to 100 people ahead of them are turning around and pushing them back down. So there's something of a, a confusion, something of a, a, a stampede, a trample situation going on. Yeah, yeah. Um, in which case then, as I'm uh, hopefully catching up to the, the back of the column, I'd like to uh, make an attempt to, um, and I'm not going to shout because my voice is a bit buggered. Fair enough. Um, but I would really like to try and shout to as many people in the column that I can um, and try and lead them um, off to the one side further away from the landslide. Okay, um, um, can, can I rock, can I get oh, yeah. you to roll a performance check? We're, I, just so everyone's aware, I've, I'm calling it now, we're going into initiative order just because uh, whatever is creating the landslide is now in play. Um, what have you got? It's not a natural That's, occurrence. You, you didn't spot that. Um, you've got 11 on yep. your performance check. Uh, yes, because I have no performance. Okay, fine. Uh, you do begin, so the, the, the 10 people directly in front of you, what specifically do you shout, sorry? Um. <coughs> you don't have to shout it, but just, just give me the that words. It's, uh, just that it's, it's up, I want to gesture up to the, uh, the mountain where we can see it coming from, um, and then essentially kind of traffic warden them and just, be like just can <laughs> this way yeah. this way um, and the 40 odd people directly around you maybe half of them turn and start running um, and eventually everyone's gonna get by the end of this round everyone's gonna get the message um, that will take us uh, to Adesan. Um I would so I'm, I'm a little confused as to what's going on, but yeah. I, I, everyone's in a state of panic around me, so I'd quite like to cast at calm emotions uh, for everyone around me, just so that there's less panic. You know, you've got to exit in an orderly fashion. <laughs> Don't yeah. pick up your, your personal yeah. items. We must just be, stay the safe. The exit to the mountain are here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in an emergency, everyone just stay calm. Uh, so yeah, calm emotions. Um, and then uh, that's charisma saving That's charisma, yeah. yeah. The, every, they all have to be Christmas saving What's your, um, How many how, hundred people do you say there were? Uh, yeah. It, it was um, a 20 foot radius of me. So. <laughs> What's your DC? My DC is 17, I believe. 17? Well, 
I think I so, if, unless I've done that wrong. I did roll a natural 18, so not all of them Not have all passed, of them. But I also rolled an 8. Okay, so well. about half of the people around right. you suddenly go, okay, we need to not panic. We need to, and they yeah. just start walking calmly. Good. Trying to get <laughs> out of the way of this landslide. They are going to be slower than the panicky people, but at least they're not trampling. Yeah, people. and they won't fall over. So. Yeah. That's what did fine. you get? I'm very calm right now. Yeah, so nice. A bliss comes over Locke's face. <laughs> oh, yeah, you and you. <laughs> I thought you'd just run away. <laughs> Walter. Walter, I I would like to, to cast Thunder Step and uh, oh, head towards uh, the closest, like the, from where I can see them, head towards them, uh, like a little bit further up the hill from where the, a large clump of people are. Towards okay. these guys. Towards those guys. So you'll you'll be able to move with Thunder Step, I think, sixty feet up. Uh, oh, it says, it says unoccupied space. Yeah, I, within yeah, range. I, I think uh, sixty feet. Sixty feet. Cool. Okay, so. Um. So. Towards them and then start running. Sure. Would you like to narrate? So basically, this Thunder Step is the beginning of a sprint. Yeah. Would you like to tell us how it appears? And uh, so, Walton kind of hikes up. Uh, whatever uh, clothing he has, takes up a, a kind of sprinting position, looks toward and goes, all right then, let's do this. And as he starts off, uh, the f- initial footstep hits and the thunder step uh, projects him <laughs> with an incredibly loud, booming, yeah. thunderous noise. There's a crack of energy that all of you hear. And uh, hopefully that should also try and persuade people away from heading south. Uh, okay. So back up into the landslide. Yeah, that's the plan. Not intentionally, but that's <laughs> definitely. Lock. I'm, I'm just quite chill. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Um, uh, with a calmness of thoughts, I, people are kind of running away. I see a big. Do I see the landslide coming towards me? Yeah, roll a perception check again. 16. You do indeed see the landslide, and behind the landslide, like underneath it, you see flashes of silver, flashes of what look like armor. Oh. Um, it looks like there's something. Soldiers? Within the, uh, the, the hill itself, causing this landslide. Cool. Um, in that case, I'll say it looks like there's some sort of soldiers in this landslide. And then um, prepare um, Eldritch Blast, hold it for when I can see something, a target in range. Okay, your hands begin to fizz with red energy as you prepare your Eldritch Blast, leading us uh, finally uh, to these soldiers which erupt from the side of the hill, leaping towards specifically the two of you. Um, And what you see is this large six-legged creature uh, which is down on its six legs with a huge chitinous uh, bone-plated armour creating a sort of shovel on its forehead and underneath this a great maw opening out with a tongue lashing beneath it. Um, These are, of course, bullets, for those of you who know. And they leap out of the mountain, um, one on each of you. But do I I see them? Do I get to do my Eldritch Blast? You do get to do your Eldritch Blast on one of them. You still have a bardic inspiration, just reminding me. I still got it. Yes. Okay. Um, So, that's 12 plus... Four, so that's 16 to hit. Their armor class is 17. Oh, oh, I'm really sorry. So the Eldritch Blast fires off. Don't you have two? I do. Did you roll two? No, no, that's the first one. Okay, so the first one fires off and it hits straight in the thing's face, but deflects off of the plate armor. And the second one completely misses as it gets, <laughs> zoom. It gets closer and closer. And I need you both to make... Uh, either athlete, uh, either strength or dexterity saving throws. It's your choice. Uh, either, both are rubbish. So. Okay. 
Seven, 18. 18. 13. 13 is not so good. So uh, you watch, Locke, you step to the side as this thing comes straight down into where you were standing, landing right where it would have crushed you. Um, and as you turn and step out of its way, you watch as Adesana is knocked to the ground and the thing is on top of her, standing above her. Ooh, and that. it begins to bite at her shoulder for a 26, which oh I presume God. will hit you which yep. does 30 piercing damage. Ooh, 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 ooh. As this bullet just, it almost engulfs her entire upper body um, <laughs> with its bite as you stand wow. and watch. The bullet that you jo- you dodged doesn't get advantage because you're not prone, um, but it does hit you for it's 17? Yes. 17, so again, 30 piercing damage. As you watch that, you come in, the, 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 the huge maw of the thing completely engulfs your arm and you're suddenly like being tossed around by it. Oh, I am ticked off. <laughs> <laughs> Owen, you see that happen. Anyone got any Through healing Through the crowd spells? that you're trying to direct, you see a burst of dirt and these two huge creatures land on your friends um, and begin to eat them. Uh, it's your turn. Oh, joy. Um, how far away am I currently? Uh, I would say about 60 feet from them. Amazing. Can I You're use... very close to them, Walton, for your head. Uh, can I use Hunter Sense on the bullet that is currently attempting to devour at it? Yep. Um, and it, uh, for anyone wondering, it basically says you can uh, immediately learn whether the creature has any damage immunities um, and you can magically discern how best to damage this creature. Um, because apparently they sound quite armoured and I would really love to place a lovely pinpoint arrow shot. So you're aware of bullets, you've studied them a little bit in the forest because they, they're quite, I mean, you think moles are a problem for gardens. <laughs> bullets, <laughs> bullets are the forest moles. Um, so you've studied them and you know that while they are incredibly armoured, once you get underneath that armour, actually they don't have a, a, a huge amount of hit points. Um, and while they do a lot of damage, they don't have any damage resistances or immune resistances. Okay. Um, just I, the tr- the struggle is just going to be getting through that AC. Yeah. Oh, okay. So once you do break through that AC, then you're you're okay with that. Pretty much. Right. Um, in which case, I'll take. Uh, I'll try to take another. Oh no, because I'm on the other side, so there are people in my way. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm just gonna head. I'm gonna keep shouting that they need to. The people need to keep moving away. Yep. Um, and as they, as I do that, I'm going to start heading um, back through, making my way through the column uh, to try and get to the other side to help. Walking fast, away. faces past. And your home and band. Your home band. Uh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. So you're just gonna start pushing your way through the people. I'm gonna say you can get as far, like at your full speed, you'd be able to get within, if you just use a movement within 30 feet, or if you used your dash, I'd say within 60 feet, because you know how to walk on hills and mountains. Yeah. You, you see where the crevices are. You can skip over them very easily with elven grace. Hey, um, if I'm within uh, 60 feet, then I fancy the sword play, so I'm going to use my dash to cover that 60 feet. Okay, um, and drawing your sword. Drawing you my go. short, my double short sword once I get past the column of people so that I'm not trying to run past people like, I'm sorry, excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah. Absolutely, okay. Well that will take us then to Adesana, who uh, you're currently pinned and being eaten. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, am I it's able to and cast the spell from here? It depends what spell you want to cast. Um, I'd like to cast Hideous Laughter. Yeah, okay, try and make this thing laugh. All right, so while, while he's <laughs> grappling me, I'm like, Oi, big thing! Oh. What did the gnome bard call his twin daughters? I Hang on, before... <laughs> oh. I, I really want to hear the joke. punch. I, I do want to hear the punchline, go on. Anna one, Anna two! Uh, Very good. Thank you, Edinburgh good. Bins, for that one. Oh, dear. <laughs> um, I seem oh, to remember... I <laughs> know this spell quite well. I seem to remember that it doesn't work on creatures with a, an intelligence score. I'm just, I'm just chilling here, telling jokes. Lower than five. <laughs> really sorry, guys. I, I don't... I don't. Mm. Yeah, it's 
So, so it, I just uh, I just told him a lovely little joke. Just there. told him a joke. I'm, I'm laughing. Your, if it helps. He's eating um, your arm. <laughs> 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 well, okay, cool. Um, can I do? Oh, can I do anything else? Um, so that would be your action for the. That would be my action, but I do. Um, Sorry, that got a bit rules. rules no, no problem, I got to tell a shit joke. A bad <laughs> joke. Sorry. <laughs> um, 14 plus, 14 plus. Um, I, can't, I can't really do anything. I don't know whether I can sing a little song from underneath. I'm going to allow it. Okay, let, let me... Um, oh, dear. I'm being eaten. Uh, yeah, it's, it's sort of... Um, always look on the bright <laughs> side <laughs> of <laughs> life. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I'm sort of like hysterical. That's all I can manage. Sure. Um, who was who was near me? Owens near you. Lock is near you. Practically next. To Walton you. is actually near you as well. Everyone. Mm, everyone is. Here. Oh, who um, who is? You had it last time, so you can you can have the bardic inspiration this time. So you get the D8. Oh, lovely. Yeah, well, cool. Was, was, was so you same. can add that to any skill checks or uh, attack. You roles. can oh, also add it because I've got combat inspiration. You can also add it to uh, damage rolls oh, and uh, AC. Is that a new thing? That's, That's a level yeah. seven thing. It's a, it's a valid so thing. So basically, uh, any time that something's going wrong, ask me if you can use the bardic inspiration. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Walton. <laughs> <laughs> the situation in front of you is pretty grim. Oh. Your two friends are uh, being strung along by the arm. They're being c consumed, and the landslide has I anybody got any it, healing spells? Is still behind the bullets, gathering speed. And I am sprinting towards them, hearing the thunder behind me. Just <sighs> you'd, make it, you'd make it to them with your movement. Yeah. Oh, marvelous. Don't worry, I'm here. Right. Uh, I would like to aim Thunderwave towards the mudslide to try and disperse it as much as possible around. Awesome! Them. Okay, that's you really cool. saucy boy! Oh, yes. <laughs> so you set yourself up uh, behind the bullets with yeah. the mudslide facing you down. Um, how does your, your Thunderwave appear? Um, it, with this, Walton stares at the mudslide stares at it for a little too long, <laughs> gets slightly lost in it, <laughs> and the ghost, oh yes, of course, claps his hand together as loud as he can and spreads it out as wide as possible. And when he opens his palms, a crack of thunder comes out from uh, behind it, pushing the, uh, the dirt up and away and around and indeed onto the refugees. But that's fine. Um, Perception of one, that's right? fine. <laughs> right? Um, yeah, but but you've that's that's really cool. So for now, you have you have you have stopped the mudslide from hitting the lot of you. Yes. I'm gonna say. Please um, help I'm me. helping. <laughs> Lock, you get one action before we come to the end of the hour. Um, well. I am going to cast Dissonant Whispers. Yay! Yay! Does it need a <laughs> check? <laughs> Does it need a Apparently Dissonant Whispers is careless. It's careless yeah. Whispers. Um, so that's a nine on my wisdom saving throw. You, you failed that, mate. I failed it, haven't that's, I? That's, because I'm cussing at fourth level now, a lot of D6s. <laughs> Look how happy he is. <laughs> He's so Whee! proud. Um, so that's 12 uh, plus that's 20. 24. Wow. And he runs away. And what specifically are you saying to this bullet? You're not as good as you think you are. Oh. <laughs> One star review from Steve Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it, you can see behind its eyes, while it's not intelligent, it, it can feel fear, certainly. And this primal instinct kicks in. It drops your arm, which begins bleeding copiously. Ow. Um, and it turns tail and literally burrows into the side of the hill leaving its companion uh, to its to whatever it's going to do next. Its companion is somewhat concerned with Adesana on the floor. Um, yeah, I mean, I hit you. Uh, <laughs> because you're... Will I make it to the next hour? This is the real mm, question. Mm. So, once again, that's 4d12 plus 4 piercing. Yeah, I don't, I don't think... I think we're going to have to make a new character for the next one. <laughs> See... 27, 30, yeah, let's just say 30. Yeah, okay, well, I'm unconscious. You're unconscious. Yeah. As, as you watch Locke 
Um, the bullet's mouth closes around not only Adesana's arm, but it, her entire torso. Cool. Ooh, that's not nice. Cool. And she doesn't look very conscious. Her legs go limp. Um, and the landslide stops, comes to a halt. Um, you can see several people around you. The refugees have been caught in it. Various heroes are running to try and pull people from the dirt. And this scene of absolute chaos, uh, unfortunately, is where we're going to have to leave this hour oh, of Adventurers Wanted. I know, right? So thank you very much for coming. Uh, if you did enjoy the show, please do spread the word about it on your social medias and indeed face-to-face. -face. Uh, on Twitter, we're at Adventurers250 and Naomi has been live tweeting the entire event, has, as has Nemo. They do it in shifts. Um, <laughs> so... Uh, we're also uh, Adventurers Wanted everywhere else, Instagram, Facebook, and we're live streaming on Twitch. Hello, Twitch stream, uh, twitch.tv forward slash Adventurers Wanted uh, from that camera there. Um, and uh, we also have a Patreon. If you really enjoy what we do, we do this every uh, month in London, and we do work in Brighton as well. We do free play events to try and bring the hobby to as wide and as as inclusive an audience as possible. And on that note, uh, while they are limited availability and indeed are selling out now, um, we do have player tickets. So you can come up and play with us on stage, which is what our lovely uh, Miranda and Reese have done here. Um, so uh, do inquire at the sweet box office after those uh, if that sounds like something you, uh, you'd be interested in. Uh, just before we let you go, I'd love to hand over to our players and give them a chance to plug things that they're involved in. Maybe at the fringe, maybe if, uh, if you've got nothing uh, at the fringe uh, in your real life. Uh, James, shall we start with you? Yes. Um, this is the first time I think I can legitimately pr promote my children's show because there's people in the room who might be interested. Um, I'm doing a uh, show um, called Dr. James's Bad Schemes. It's probably, I'd say, more fun for adults, but it's about me trying to take over the world. <laughs> um, and it's on at one twenty at Sweet Venues. Um, tonight, I'm for one last night, I'm doing a, a grown-up uh, show, um, which is essentially Beauty and the Beast meets Fight Club. Um, <laughs> it, we did it last night, and it was... Uh, hilarious apparently so <laughs> if, you, if you do want to come see me in a full dress please do come and it's called Beast Club Beast Club it's at 9.30 at the main suite venue as well Well, Grant uh, I'm performing in a, a quartet called The Other Guys at uh, C Main which is on Chamber Street from 9.15 uh, almost every day but Wednesday uh, it's a musical review of Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons but you get some Beatles some pop medley um, there's a live band it's essentially me and three other guys going insane on stage for an hour. Um, if you guys enjoy music and people working really, really hard. What's it called? Um, it's called The Other Guys. Um, then by all means, please do come along. We'd love to have you there. Uh, Miranda. Um, I'm not in the show at the Fringe, but um, in my real life, I work for a YouTube channel uh, that's all about cosplay and comic conventions. It's called The 86th Floor Cosplay and Cons. Uh, if you like comic conventions and cosplay um, and kind of like short music videos based on video games or comic books, then I would highly recommend you check it out. We've just, uh, last year we did a Spider-Verse video where we had oh. 40 Spider-Men in one pub. Nice. Um, and actually this weekend we are doing that again, but we're doing Spider-Man Sports Day. So keep an eye out <laughs> for, uh, for that. And there's also sort of Harley Quinn, a bit of Miraculous Ladybug, a bit of Life is Strange, just it, lots of stuff. So, uh, that, but that's where I work. That so sounds cool. Check that out. Awesome. Uh, I'm I'm just a punter in Edinburgh and thoroughly enjoying it. So I would, I would recommend uh, everyone going out and finding new things. Find new things. It's fun. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Well, all that remains for me to do, of course, is. Uh, ask for a round of applause for our players, but also for our fantastic BSL interpreter, Tommy. Woo! Well done. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, we do have a very quick turnaround, so uh, 